crusader for the rights of black people all of his life. He has also been a crusader that had a lot of friends, not only in the black community, but the white community in sports. He's always been outstanding, always an individual, always speaking his mind, always giving you a platform to express your views. And when I was incarcerated, he did everything he could to uh, attack those that incarcerated me unfairly. And uh, he's one of my friends over the years. We've done many things together. So Harold is truly a man, truly a man that believes in his culture and his people and will always be that way because nobody's ever been able to change him. This is the heavyweight champion of the world, George Foreman, for the best in sports and sports personalities. When I am in Washington, D.C., I check out my good friend, Harold Bell, an inside sport. Talking about a real champion, Harold Bell, an inside sport. For many fans of the sweet science of boxing, the head rat has long been Don King, a one-time numbers runner and street punk who served jail time for manslaughter. King has been called a ghetto Machiavelli, a high-stakes hustler, a celebrity promoter who has guided the careers, some say victimized, boxing stars from Muhammad Ali to Mike Tyson. And with us in Washington, Harold Bell, a pioneer in the field of sports talk radio and TV. Mr. Bell has known Don King for more than 20 years. Hi, this is Don King of Don King Productions for the undisputed champion of sports talk. You must turn to my man, Harold Bell and the original Inside Sports. For the best in sports and sports personalities, Inside Sports and Harold Bell are knockout. And now, from the playing field of Banneker to the locker room of RJ Stadium, it's Inside Sports with your host, Harold Bell. Give Harold a call at 462-3313, 462-3313. Okay. Hi, I'm Harold Bell, and this is the Legends of Inside Sports and the way we were. Got a very special uh, show for you today. I want to introduce you to someone that um, has kept hope alive as far as I'm concerned. You know, I was um, I was checking out my, my man um, uh, recently. Uh, Frank Jones had called me and uh, he said, Harold, have you ever heard of uh, this guy, Dale Hansen. And I said, no, I, I had not. I said, who is Dale Hansen? He said, this is a guy that deals with and talks about white privilege in America. Now, I have often said that my Inside Sports Talk format changed the way we report and talk sports in America. Sometimes I've had to wonder about that because most of these guys who report sports don't seem to have a clue. Now ESPN's Herm Edwards was the exception and I was glad to see him get out of there because sometimes it seemed the clown characteristics of Stephen A. Smith were having an influence on him. So, you know, some sportscasters seem like they would be more comfortable in a short skirt and pom-poms. Now, when Frank Jones called me about this guy, Dale Hansen, you know, I said, uh, no, I never heard of him. I, you know, he's in Dallas, Texas, and I'm here on this end. But uh, Frank said, Harold, he sounds like you. He has no cut card. He said, but he understands that there's a thin line between black and white. He said, talking about Dale, has had 11 jobs, and he's been fired from eight of them and has been given a second chance every time. He said, I know you you wouldn't understand that. <laughs> you get fired from one and that's it. But you know what I like about this guy? He admits that he is the benefactor of white privilege. Now, I have never heard a guy, a white guy, make that admission. 
He said, I'm going to email you his commentary on white privilege and get back to me. Now, when I heard this guy, Dale Hanson, I discovered he not only talks the talk, but he walks the walk. I want you to take a couple of minutes and listen to his commentary on white privilege. This online software is revolutionizing the way businesses are making sales. Having to manually... Been a lot of criticism of the Arizona Cardinals hiring Cliff Kingsbury as their new coach. Even my guys Mike and Jonah have been questioning that hire. But Kingsbury fits all the criteria to be a head coach in the NFL. He's an offensive genius, he's young, and he's white. And not necessarily in that order. There have been six new coaches hired so far, all white, and two coaches of color they are replacing. Stephen Wilkes fired in Arizona after just one year. Lance Joseph in Denver after just two. The Cowboys coach Jason Garrett is in his ninth year, apparently because he wins so much. A lot of people don't understand how Kingsbury can have a losing record at Texas Tech, no NFL experience, and get one of the 32 NFL jobs. But getting fired at Tech doesn't eliminate him from moving up, at least it doesn't to me. I've had 11 jobs in my life, been fired from eight of them, and moved up every time. And I am arrogant enough to tell you, I think Channel 8 was right to give me another chance. But I am the product of white privilege in America, and I've never denied that I wasn't either. If they made a poster, my picture should be on it. Getting fired at one place and getting another chance isn't the problem. But young, talented coaches of color not getting the chance, that's a huge problem. The covert racism of the NFL ownership group was so bad, the NFL had to make a rule so that minority coaches could at least get an interview. Cowboys secondary coach Chris Richard has been interviewed, and there are reports saying he might get the Miami job. After what he's done with this Cowboys defense, how could he not? Unless it is true what black parents have been telling their children for decades now. You have to be twice as good to go half as far. I dream of the day when those parents are wrong, because now they're not. Okay, that was uh, Dale Hansen. And uh, I must admit that uh, he's, he's right on the one. Right on the one. You know, he walked away from the radio broadcast team of the Dallas Cowboys, as many of you know, they are America's team, or think they are. Now, I was stunned that he told one of the NFL's most powerful owners, Jerry Jones, I thought you were a good man, but I don't know you anymore. I said to myself, this guy must be filthy rich and has no ego to answer to. You know, <laughs> You know, America and white privilege, man, that we have to understand that is there. But I have said, too, that a lot of white folks don't understand racism. They don't, they don't, they don't, they don't how can they understand it when they have never walked in my shoes? Now, <laughs> I used to close, I still do close my talk show every time with every black face that I see is not my brother and every white face that I see that I saw was not my enemy. Now I owe thanks to Red Orback, Burt Randolph Sugar, Miss Him Today, Angelo Dundee, and Richard Milhouse Nixon, the President of the United States. They shaped my thinking on racism in America. Now, you can take a look at, at what Dale Hansen has gone through and what he did by walking away from America's team, you know, and one of the most powerful owners virtually saying, you can take this job and shove it. Now, that was once a popular country music song written by David Allen Cole, and recorded by Johnny Paycheck in 1977. You know, when I started to check Dale Hansen out on YouTube, his commentaries on white pri privilege were off the chart. He was consistent. He wasn't setting, ever setting on the fence. 
And like I said, I've, I've often said about, you know, white folks, some white folks uh, don't understand that they're racist. But we got some black folks that are just as racist as white folks. White folks do not have a patent on racism in America. Now, Dale Wright's commentaries, like my dear friend, the late WRC TV4 anchor, Jim Vance, once did. In Dale's commentaries, there are the sounds of rhyme and rhythm. Now, I'm a fan. And I hope he keeps lighting up the airwaves. Dale Hansen is living proof that I was correct. You know, when I closed my shows and coined the phrase in 1972 that every black face I saw was not my brother and every white face I saw was not my enemy. Now, my opinion, Dale Hansen's commentary on the hiring of Pac-Man Jones was his best. Now... I'm going to close the show with that commentary, and I'll let you decide for yourself yourself whether you think uh, it was the best. Check him out on YouTube, and of course, uh, here's Pac-Man Jones in that commentary. I had planned to talk tonight about golf being the greatest game, and it is, but I'll have to do it another day. The Cowboys play a bigger game, and the trade for Pac-Man Jones is a bigger story. Cowboys owner Jerry Jones has reached a new low, even by his standards, in his efforts to win another Super Bowl. He signs the teammate bashing Terrell Owens, Tank Johnson and his guns, and now Pac-Man Jones and his posse. Owens calls his teammates gay and won't honor a contract, but when Pac-Man is around, people get shot. Would somebody please give Jones a Super Bowl trophy before somebody gets hurt? The man who wouldn't draft Randy Moss because of his legal problems now wants Pac-Man Jones. When he's finally done playing football, you won't find his picture in the media guide. A former Cowboy great, so it'll be in the post office. It's ridiculous to think he's just an unlucky guy who's been in the wrong place at the wrong time. Twelve times he's been involved with police, arrested six times. I've broken the law. Heck, some laws are like records. They're made to be broken, but never arrested. Pac-Man has been arrested six times in three years. Just how unlucky can one man be? I've always liked Jerry Jones, even defended him when he broke up one of the NFL's best radio teams. <laughs> he had me fired the day after I quit, but I was okay with it then and still am because I couldn't do it anymore looking at the team they had become and the coach they had. I don't know how Brad Sham and Babe Laufenberg can do it now. Pac-Man Jones isn't a young man deserving of a second chance. He's had more than his share. There are literally thousands of young black men sitting in a jail cell tonight, and the only real difference between them and Jones is they're not fast enough, they're not talented enough to help the other Joneses of the world win football games. The Cowboys apologist, who says the character of the player doesn't matter, it's only about what they can do on a football field, is what bothers me the most. If character really doesn't matter, why don't they sign Osama bin Laden to play wide receiver? They need one. He's 6'4", and we know nobody can catch him. <laughs> and as dumb as that may well be, it's no worse than the hypocrisy of the typical Cowboys fan, the rich white man in the luxury box who talks so passionately about being tough on crime will stand and cheer when Pac-Man makes a play, but they wouldn't hire him to work in their company when he needs a job. And if he showed up on their doorstep to pick Pick up their daughter for a night on the town, they would shoot him through the glass. Pac-Man says on ESPN radio the other day, he's owning up to his mistakes now and says he doesn't know the man arrested in the shooting at a Vegas strip club that left a bouncer paralyzed. The man he talked to outside the club before the shooting started, he doesn't know that man. The man he paid $15,000 to for services rendered, he doesn't know that man. Now he says he paid the money because he was being threatened. You threaten me or my family, one of two things is going to happen, and neither one of them involves a check. Cowboys owner Jerry Jones, I don't know that man anymore either. I've always thought he was a good man with a good heart, trying to win the right way, but not anymore. At long last, have you no sense of decency, sir? It was a question directed at Wisconsin Senator Joe McCarthy in the 50s when he was destroying the careers of so many people. Jones is destroying the legacy of a once proud football franchise. At long last, have you no sense of decency, sir? Okay, that was Dale Hansen. <laughs> I tell you, that was powerful. Let me, let me tell you something, folks. You cannot buy peace of mind 
all integrity. You can't buy it. So I want to thank Dale Hansen in Dallas, Texas for keeping hope alive. Well, that's going to be it for this segment of the Legends of Inside Sports and the way we were. And remember that every black face you see is not your brother and every white face is not your enemy.